Let's now move on to simultaneous localization and mapping, or SLAM in short. So far, we considered primarily the optimization of two adjacent frames in time, and there was no specific focus on a globally consistent and accurate map. The map was only obtained as a byproduct in order to help us estimate motion, relative motion. Now, in this unit, we're going to consider optimization over larger windows. Ideally, the entire history, that means all of the frames that we have recorded so far. And we optimize both poses and the map. That could be, for example, the 3D feature locations in indirect SLAM. It's important to note that SLAM is a chicken and egg problem. Accurate localization requires accurate mapping and vice versa. And therefore joint optimization of the poses and the map is necessary. Another key frame feature of SLAM, apart from optimizing over much larger windows, is to correct, be able to correct accumulation errors via so-called loop closure detection. And uh, therefore the resulting map becomes more globally consistent and can be used for localization purposes. There exist, as in visual odometry, indirect or feature-based SLAM and direct SLAM methods. And there's many flavors. There's filtering-based fl SLAM methods like EKF SLAM that only, that while considering the entire history, only update the current pose. These are online algorithms. Or bundle adjustment or windowed bundle adjustment algorithms that try to make the entire history and all of the poses coherent and update all of the poses also, um, previous poses. In this unit here, we will only cover feature-based SLAM via bundle adjustment, but towards the end of the unit, I will point, I will give you some pointers to our SLAM algorithms that you can have a look at if you like. So let's look at feature-based SLAM. The goal is to optimize reprojection errors. Um, um, that is the distance between the observed features in the image and the projected 3D points into the image plane with respect to the camera parameters and the 3D point cloud. And you can see an example of such a 3D point cloud and camera poses here for an indoor scene on the right. And on the left, this is a self-driving situation from the Kitty data set where you can see the recovered trajectory in green and the 3D landmarks, the 3D features in black, which form the map. So let's define this process formally. And the process is called bundle adjustment in computer vision. So that's very related to, to this bundle adjustment type SLAM. Let pi denote the set of all the n cameras and we're going to use that notation to also refer to the intrinsic and extrinsic parameters when we speak of pi it's not just a projection function but we also refer to the parameters themselves let further x w denote the set of 3d points in world coordinates and let x s denote the corresponding image screen observations in all eye cameras. Now, of course, not every 3D point is observed in every camera image, but we must observe at least some of the 3D points in multiple images in order to solve our SLAM problem. Bundle adjustment then minimizes the reprojection error of all observations. This equation is very similar to the equation before where we have optimized, where we have performed a bundle adjustment over two views for visual odometry, but except in, in this case here now, we optimize over more views. So we have n camera views and we have p uh, features, p landmarks, and we minimize the difference of the observation and the corresponding projection. This is the point in world coordinate. This is the point 
this, the correspondence in screen coordinate. And we minimize that with respect to all the cameras. That includes the, in particular, the extrinsic parameters, but you can also optimize or fine tune the intrinsic parameters as well as the 3D feature locations. Here in this equation, WIP indicates if a point P is observed in image I and pi I of the world's point, the landmark, is the 3D to 2D projection of that 3D landmark onto the 2D image plane according to the camera model where we have an extrinsic part that transforms from world coordinate to camera coordinate as well as an intrinsic transformation that goes onto screen or pixel coordinates. So it's a, again as before chaining two transformations <coughs> Um, plugging this into here. Okay, and this is the illustration for this, similar to before, except that now we do have a representation as a, uh, like the 3D points, the landmarks are represented in some world coordinate system that could coincide with one of the camera systems, but it doesn't have to. And we are estimating now the pose of all the cameras. Now two cameras are shown here, but of course there's much more. And there's also much more than just three landmarks. But to keep this illustration simple, I've just chosen two cameras and three landmarks still to illustrate this. <coughs> so during bundle adjustment, we optimize the camera parameters as well as the 3D landmarks jointly. One thing to note is that luckily the optimization process is not as hard as it seems in the first glance because the Hessian that's required for computing, uh, for updating our nonlinear optimizer while it's large, it's typically very sparse. And the reason is that there's no constraints connecting landmarks with respect to each other or poses with respect to each other. So we can rearrange that Hessian to be very sparse. These are the pose dimensions in this example. These are the landmark dimensions. And you can see while poses are connected to many landmarks, they are connected not to each other. And landmarks are also not connected to each other, leading to this very sparse matrix. <clears throat> and this leads to tremendous computational benefits when using sparse optimizers. Now the final thing um, I'd like to talk about is loop closure detection. Um, loop closure detection is about correcting the drift, the accumulation of error over time, as we have discussed before for visual odometry. And we can do that by um, the fact that if we revisit the same place here, the green place is the same place, again, while traversing the environment, we can try to match features, not only with respect to previous frames, but also with respect to like fr frames, <coughs> sorry, frames very far into the past. So we can try to like, let's say this is the current frame we can try to match features to all previous frames. And we might find that there's features here that are very similar. And if we found such a loop closure, we can add these additional correspondences as additional constraints during optimization. And so after loop closure detection and after optimization, this is what we get. So here's an example.
So you can see that now the vehicle arrives at the same location and the loop closure has been detected. And now including these constraints into the optimization snaps these two parts of the map together and makes it more consistent. Now, of course, this only works if you actually visit the same place multiple times. So this is a central aspect of SLAM. <coughs> um, so here on the last two slides, these are from Jörg Stückler's slides. I just wanted to illustrate to you that there's a whole variety of indirect SLAM methods and also direct SLAM methods. I'm not going to go through these tables in detail, but just to show you um, some references. And these differ <coughs> in the type that some of them are online, some of them are are using a bundle adjustment and uh, some use monocular cameras, some use stereo, RGBD, uh, etc. 